what's going on y'all it's cone back here again today with another video and the 2024 nba playoff bracket is now set coming into sunday game 82 of the season where all 30 teams played there was a lot of drama only five teams were locked into place everybody else could change spots and a lot of movement did end up happening and ultimately i think it resulted in a near perfect bracket this is going to be maybe the best nba playoffs of all time at least one of the best we've seen in a while so many great matchups so many narratives going into it so many fantastic storylines calls backs to earlier on in the season it's incredible this is going to be an insane playoffs and i'm really excited so i want to go ahead and right here right now just off rip give you a bit of a preview about what the bracket could look like what i'm looking for in each matchup and why it's going to be such a special post season starting off in the western conference there was a three-way tie for the first spot coming into today and ultimately the oklahoma city thunder with a win grab that one spot the nuggets get the two with a win and the minnesota timberwolves fall to three with a loss today to Phoenix. The Clippers and Mavericks grab four and five. That same Suns team gets number six. The Pelicans get the seven spot. Lakers get the eight. And Kings and Warriors finish at nine and ten. Over in the play-in tournament, Pelicans versus Lakers is going to be really interesting. This Pelicans team has been great all year, been a bit hit or miss as of late with Brandon Ingram being hurt, but now Brandon Ingram is going to return. He returned in this game today against the Lakers, where ultimately they did get blown out, which helped the Lakers get to the 8th seed and avoid that 9-10 game. But the Pelicans are going to have a chance at home to go ahead and get that win back. It's going to be a really fun game, especially when you consider the storylines of AD playing his former team in New Orleans and Brandon Ingram having a chance to knock off his former squad and go ahead and get a little bit of revenge here. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I'm excited to see the battle between Zion Williamson attacking down low up against Anthony Davis. What can LeBron do in this winner go home format? We've seen him here a couple of times. He always performs. The unfortunate part for these two teams is the winner has to face the Denver Nuggets, who are still a juggernaut team. They're the reigning champions. So it's not the best reward, but hey, at the very least, you don't have to play in a loser go home game immediately off the bat like the Kings and the Warriors do. This is also going to be a really fun game. These two teams gave us last year probably the best series of the first round, one of the best series of the playoffs period with their seven game matchup. The Sacramento Kings do end up getting home court advantage. That crowd's going to be loud and ridiculous. But the Warriors won their last year in Game 7 where Curry had a 50-piece. And Steph's got a chance to go ahead and go off again and keep their season alive. If the Warriors lose this, it's going to be a big blow to them. That could signal the end of this dynasty that we've seen been going for so long. Whereas for the Kings, they fell all the way from 3-9. to nine. They cannot afford to lose this game. They really want to push their way back to the playoffs. They don't want to have just been a one-year stay before once again falling into the lottery. So a lot of stuff on the line for those two teams and of course the winner of that game will face the loser of Pelicans and Lakers to face the Oklahoma City Thunder who you know as a Thunder fan I continue to see people say they're going to be a team that anybody can walk over that they're going to get upset get humbled this Thunder team is special top five offensively top five defensively 57 wins on the season winning a stack division that had the Nuggets and Timberwolves in it they are the youngest team to ever get a one seed youngest team to ever win 55 plus games have an MVP type guy in Shea I rambled about the Thunder a lot this season I think whoever they face off against, it's going to be a really fun series. If it's up against Sacramento, it's a battle of two amazing guards in Shea, as well as De'Aaron Fox. It would be Sabonis versus Chet down low. With the Warriors, that would be a big full circle moment after the Warriors, of course, knocked off the Thunder in the playoffs in 2016. Thunder have the chance to go ahead and announce the beginning of their era and the end of the Warriors. That Lakers matchup is one that a lot of people are potentially looking forward to. If they end up in that spot, that would be really fun. LeBron and AD, the old guard up going up against the new. And if it's the Pelicans, you know, you see Zion and Williamson and Brandon Ingram, a young duo going up against the young big three of Shea, Chet, and Jalen Williams. So many potential fun matchups. I'm really excited as a Thunder fan. I'm probably going to be going to the first two games. Can't wait. Then in the rest of the Western Conference, the matchup that we've known has been coming for a long time now, it's been the longest one solidified, is Clippers versus Mavericks. And this one almost always felt destined. Once the Mavericks started to push their way up the standings and the Clippers became kind of solidified in the four spot, it felt like destiny. Of course, these two teams have played twice in the playoffs before and the Clippers have won both times, once in six games and once in seven games, I believe. But this time, Luka's got way more help. He's got Kyrie Irving, a great supporting cast around him. They've been one of the hottest teams in the league as of late. It's the best Best Luke has ever played in his career maybe ends up winning MVP at the very least is going to finish top three and for the Clippers they made the big trade for James Harden earlier on in the season they looked unstoppable for a lot of the year and then cooled off towards the end now they did get a little bit of momentum back but at the same time, Kawhi Leonard hasn't played in the month of April. We don't know if he's going to be ready to go for game one. If he comes back, is he going to be 100%? It's the typical injury bug that always seems to bite the Clippers around this time of year. But if they're healthy, Kawhi is one of the best playoff players in NBA history. Him, Paul George, and James Harden going up against 
of course, Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving as the other duo. James Harden and Kyrie having played together in Brooklyn recently. The potential of the Mavericks to finally overcome this demon and maybe go on a run to the Western Conference Finals or even further. There are so many storylines going into the series. This one is probably the one I'm looking forward to most in the first round, just as an overall objective basketball fan perspective. It's going to be special. I cannot wait for that amazing hoops. I hope Kawhi is healthy because he versus Luka will be a battle of two of the best playoff performers in recent NBA history. Wrapping up the West at the 3-6 matchup, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns. This is one that also will be really, really fun. Phoenix, of course, disappointed on the year they were looking to be a top 3-4 seed with Bradley Beal in town next to Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. Didn't end up quite that way, but despite having a really tough schedule to end the year, they were able to rack up some wins and push their way out of the play-in and get a matchup against Minnesota, who they've been really good against this season. With their win today, they beat Minnesota in all three of their meetings and won all three of those games by double digits. So maybe this is a bit of a favorable matchup for Phoenix. Maybe this is the ideal opponent. And for the Timberwolves, it's a bit worrying that you do have to play this team in the first round especially because Carl Anthony Towns is still just working his way back from injury. Maybe he'll look a lot better after a week of rest leading into this series, but it's a little bit of a concern. However, they do have Anthony Edwards, who was unbelievable in the playoffs last year, a big time elevator in those games. But Kevin Durant and Devin Booker have done some special stuff in the playoffs in their own right. This is a really fun series that I could see a little bit of upset potential. I'm not saying the Wolves are going to lose. I need to break it down a little bit more before I decide officially, but I think this one could be really close and it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if it went to seven games with either team winning in that scenario. Moving over to the Eastern Conference, we knew the Boston Celtics were going to be the one seed for basically the whole season, it felt like, and they're going to play one of four teams in the play in either the Bulls, the Hawks, the Sixers, or the Miami Heat. The Sixers and Heat end up in the playing game at the 7-8 spots after the Sixers won on a big winning streak to end the season. I believe it was eight games with Embiid coming back and looking great. Was enough to go ahead and push them out of the playing because teams ahead of them kept winning as well, especially today. And it sets them up a matchup with the Miami Heat, who they have some history with, of course, losing to them in the playoffs a number of times. Jimmy Butler being a Sixer before and that whole moment where he said, you know, y'all picked Tobias Harris over me after knocking them off in a game. It's going to be heated. Now, the Sixers do have home court advantage, and I think with Embiid coming back, they're going to have the upper hand to be the favorites. But as you know, this Miami Heat team doesn't care about being the underdog, the favorite. They don't care where they are. They're going to go ahead and give it their all. We'll see if playoff Jimmy shows up the way that he typically does. They're going to need a big performance out of Bam and a bio going up against Joel Embiid. This is going to be an amazing game, maybe the most exciting playing game out of any of these. And we already have a bunch of great ones. In the 9-10 matchup, it's Bulls versus Hawks, another matchup that we knew was coming for a while. Can't say I'm the most excited for it. I mean, it will be cool to see, you know, DeMar DeRozan, Kobe White go up against Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. And there are big implications for the Hawks if they lose this game. You know, do they trade Trey Young, DeJounte Murray in the offseason? Even if they win this game, if they don't make the playoffs, what happens next? And then the winner of that game will play the loser of the other one. I would imagine the Sixers and Heat, in some order, end up making the playoffs. And whoever wins the first game plays the New York Knicks, who get to this spot after a win today. They're able to push up into this spot with the Bucks losing to the Magic. Jalen Brunson carries them a ton here at the end of the season made a legitimate case for all NBA first team no Julius Randle in this series he is done for the year but even without him having OJ Nanobi who's locked down Isaiah Hartenstein who's been an elite defender Mitchell Robinson Josh Hart out there Dante DiVincenzo Jalen Brunson of course being an all NBA first team second team fringe type of guy they're going to be a ridiculous tough opponent to face you're going to have to go into the garden so while they're missing an all-star level guy in Randle this is still a team that I think can make a real run because of that stout defense and the star power of a guy like Brunson. So doesn't matter who ends up making out there. I think it's going to be an amazing series, whether it is Sixers, Knicks, or Heat Knicks. Another one that I could easily see going seven games either way. That Sixers team in particular, do not sleep on them. I know people doubt the Sixers. They've fallen apart in the past, but with the way Embiid is looking and how great they were early in the season, if they get some of that rhythm back, I think that's a team that can make a sneaky run to a conference finals if they really put it together. As for whoever plays the Celtics, I think both teams can give them a little bit of a tougher series than they were bargaining for if it is the Sixers or Heat. If it's the Bulls or Hawks, the Celtics are going to sweep them very, very easily. But I do think Philly versus Boston or Miami versus Boston could be fun series. I don't pick any of them over Boston, but even still, it could be a bit of a tougher first round matchup than the Celtics were hoping for when they ran away with the one seed. 
Then below them at the 4-5 matchup, you have Cleveland versus the Magic, which is going to be, if you're looking for like physical 90s type basketball, that's what that's going to be. The Magic are one of the most ridiculous defenses I've seen in a minute with Jalen Suggs, with Jonathan Isaac, who's become one of the best defenders in the league as of late. You have Paolo Bancaro, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter, all these guys that can go ahead and lock you up. Jamal Moses has done a great job with that team. And Cleveland, on the other hand, purposefully lost today against the Hornets, it seemed like, to end up getting the chance to play the Magic. So they sought this match about. If they lose here, it'll be a second year of a first round exit, disappointingly, going up against a team with not a lot of experience. And I think that could very well lead to Donovan Mitchell saying, hey, I'm not going to extend this offseason. You can go ahead and trade me, or I'm just going to walk at the end of the year. This is a vitally important postseason for the Cavaliers. And the Magic are playing with house money. They have nothing to lose, which could take some of the pressure off of them. I think this is going to be a really fun, low scoring physical series that's going to go pretty deep into the number of games possible. And finally, for the 3 6 matchup in the East, we have Milwaukee versus Indiana, another series that kind of felt destined to happen. If you want the opposite of that Cavs Magic series, you want high paced, high scoring games, you're going to want to watch this series, especially because there is a bit of a grudge here. These two teams have had beef pretty much all season. It goes back to the in-season tournament when the Pacers beat them, and I think it was the quarterfinals, might have been the semifinals. You had Tyrese Halliburton mocking the Dame Time celebration after hitting a big shot, tapping his wrist. You had the game where Giannis set the franchise record for points scored, and the Pacers wouldn't give him the game ball, and he was running at guys, and there was that whole situation. I know Pacers and Bucks fans have been at each other's throats all season on my Twitter timeline. There is a lot of beef here, at least between the fan bases. I don't know about the teams themselves, but they definitely have a history throughout the year, and now they've got a grudge match, a grudge series that is to go ahead and settle this. Most circumstances, I would probably pick the Bucks to win the series, but it's definitely not that easy because number one, the Pacers won a majority of the matchups throughout the season between the two teams. And two, we don't know what's going on with Giannis Antetokounmpo. He has not played since that calf injury. We don't have a timetable for him quite yet. Doc Rivers said he hopes he's back for the playoffs, but obviously that's not a guarantee or anything like that. So if Giannis doesn't play, suddenly things get very scary for Milwaukee. They have not been great under Doc Rivers. Giannis has carried them pretty much all throughout the season, had his best season maybe of all time they need him desperately in the series especially because going up against the Pacers it feels like a matchup that he could take great advantage of I don't know if Dame Chris and Brooke are going to be enough to get them over the hump going up against this Pacers team that also has kind of nothing to lose and has been looking forward to this series all season this is one that I think could really go either way if Giannis comes back the Bucks probably win but if he misses a couple of games doesn't come back till later in the series or doesn't show up at all there's a real chance the Bucks fall in the first round which would be Disastrous is, I feel like, a bit of an understatement for what it would be for the Bucks if they were a first-run exit in the first year of Giannis and Dame as a duo. So there is a lot on the line with that series, too. Like, it feels like pretty much all of these series have a ton on the line, whether it's the Thunder and the Celtics trying to show that they're not frauds at the top of their conferences, like some people think. It's the Clippers trying to make maybe a run for the last opportunity with Kawhi and Paul George in town. The Mavericks trying to take advantage of this Luka Kyrie duo and how far they've come over the second half of the season. The Cavs trying to convince Donovan Mitchell to stay. The Wolves trying to take advantage of one of the best seasons in franchise history. Suns don't have a lot of years with this big three that they have. They've got to try and win as soon as possible. Nuggets going for a repeat. The list goes on and on. Everybody has something to prove or multiple things to prove in these playoffs. The stakes are really high. The bracket is incredible. So many matchups. Everything is perfect. It's going to be an insane playoffs. I cannot wait for this. All throughout this week, I'm going to be dropping playoff previews for certain series that I'm particularly interested in. If you want to see those, I'll probably drop like a playoff hot takes video and of course, towards the end of the week, I will drop my official NBA playoff predictions when the plan starts to wrap up, reactions to playing games, things like that. There is going to be a ton of content on the channel over the next week and really all throughout the playoffs. So if you want to see that, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know what you're thinking about this bracket. If your favorite team is in it, did you like the matchup that you got? Do you think you have a good path to making it to the NBA finals? Who do you think ends up winning the finals overall? I'm really curious to hear what y'all have to say because it feels like so much is just wide open. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. I really do think these could be the best playoffs of all time. I'm not just exaggerating. It's going to be really exciting. I'm stoked. I appreciate you watching as always. I'll see y'all later. Real one say it back.